Hi there, my name is Amy and I am one of the librarians here at Davis Family Library at Middlebury College. This video is one of four in our orientation series for students at the language schools. And in this video, I'll be talking about library search, which is probably the most important research resource at the library. We'll be talking a little bit about how it works and how to make best use of it for research in specific languages. I'll place timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip to a particular topic, and I'll include links to any particular resources that I call out as well. Thanks for watching. In a previous video, uh, I touched briefly on library search um, as the, the default uh, application used inside this big box um, on the library webpage as being the most important research tool, which it is. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go considerably more in, to, in depth on how to go about using it, the basic functions, uh, and how to sort of refine uh, search results to make them more useful for you. Um, at the outset, however, I do just want to say one thing. Uh, this year, we have changed the underlying platform uh, to a better one, so improvements all around, but we have recently changed the underlying platform of library search. And it's mostly in a pretty good place, but I believe that there are some changes coming up specifically over the course of the summer after I am filming these videos. So it is possible that on the day when you are actually using library search yourself, it's possible that it could look a little bit different in some ways than it does in this video. Um, I don't think it'll be in any like really major ways. I don't think you'll see large discrepancies. If anything, I think it'll probably just provide you with a few additional options than what you see here today. But I did just want to say right at the beginning, it's possible it could look a little bit different when you come to actually search it than it does right here. Um, but with that out of the way, let's talk about library search. We often describe library search as being something like Google, but just for the library. And what I mean by that is it's very good at keyword searching and it searches pretty much almost everything that the library has or has access to. So all of the books, physical books and ebooks in our collections, um, all of the journals, all of their articles, databases, newspapers, uh, DVDs and streaming videos, audio recordings, even a lot of stuff from special collections. You can find all of those materials through library search, uh, which makes it an extremely powerful tool for research because you can use a simple keyword search to look through almost everything in a single search. And it also means uh, that it can be a little bit unwieldy sometimes because it can bring you really large numbers of results, um, just like Google can do, can bring you hundreds of thousands potentially, depending on what your search is. So my objective with this video is just to kind of walk you through the basic functions and some particularly useful strategies you might use uh, to refine your search results into something that is more useful and more relevant to your own search, whatever it is that you're doing on the day. So, like I said, it's extremely good for keyword searching. So I can come in, I'm just gonna enter my search box and let's say I am researching uh, indigenous culture in Mexico. All right, so I might come in and I'm just gonna do simple keyword search. And you can see, I may have done this before. Um, so I've entered my search terms. You've note, you might notice I have also put those search terms in quotation marks. Uh, the point of doing that is to make sure that library search knows I am looking for an entire phrase exactly as I've typed it. If I did not use the quotation marks, it would search for the word indigenous and it would search for the word culture, but it would search for them separately, just both appearing in, in a result. Whereas I'm asking it, look for both of those words together, just like this. And I let it know that by putting it in quotation marks. Um, and then I will say, and Mexico. So I'm looking, I have really two search terms here, indigenous culture and Mexico. And then I'll click search and you will see. Um, so that's, I only got a little over a thousand results. That's not too much. 
Um, and so just a few things to point out. It is going to highlight my search terms. It will try to put things that it thinks are more relevant towards the top and things that it, it thinks will be less relevant as you go through the list of results, but it will highlight search terms. It's going to search in titles, abstracts, uh, author fields, the full text, wherever it's available. It's going to search for these words everywhere, um, which is why it's pulling so much stuff in. So if you see something uh, perhaps a bit later down the list where the search terms are not highlighted in the immediate results, it may be because those terms appear in the full text somewhere else. Um, but it will try to show you why those results are coming up. When you get to a result list, just a few things to point out. Some of these you'll notice. So this is an article that's available electronically. So you can see I can grab a PDF. I can read it right here online. Um, a few other things say available online. You may also see things that say full text may be available. Check for uh, options. And if we click through, Probably most of the time, sometimes you'll see that there might be a link to a full text somewhere, or it may also refer you to ILL, which I'm sure we'll find one somewhere along the way that does that. Um, but you can sort of check as you go along whether something is available immediately or whether it's just a record for something that exists, but maybe we don't have. Also, there are some filters down the left. We'll go through some of the most important ones. Uh, just to point out, there is also a filter here for available online. So if I wanted to make sure that I am only seeing things that I can access immediately, I could click this filter and apply. And it will, of course, reduce the number of results. So we're down to five, 600. Um, but hopefully, ideally, everything that does show up in this list of results will be things that I can access immediately. So if, if time is of the essence, uh, that is a very useful filter to just apply right out of the gate. We also have one for peer-reviewed journals, uh, for open access. So you have some other options here for the kinds of items that you're looking for. You can filter a bit by publication date if you're interested in a specific time frame, or you can say, you know what, I am actually only interested in books right now. Just show me books. And so this includes both print books in the stacks and ebooks. And again, you may see things that we have a record, um, but if you come in, um, perhaps we do still have access to it, or you may again get an ILL referral. If there is a way to access it online, you'll probably find it in one of these links here, or you may also see it as available in print and you'll get a call number and a location. If you open that up, you can get a little bit more direct information about where to find it physically in Davis Family Library. If you have any difficulty actually finding the item, of course, come ask a librarian and we're happy to help. Um, also, subjects, sometimes you get some, uh, actually, let's just re let's get rid of that filter. So we have more to work with. Um, you can get some subject suggestions, um, which can be a useful way to find alternate keywords also, like indigenous culture is in here, but here we also have indigenous populations, native peoples, uh, indigenous peoples. So you could, sometimes you can kind of farm this for synonyms to use as subject terms as well, or you can just search by the su suggested subject areas. And then particularly important for the language schools is the language filter. Um, so once you're here, you can filter by language of choice that you'd like to access material in. So I could say, you know what, I'm just interested in items in Spanish. Now, I will say, and, and this may be a little bit of a unique case for, for Spanish and Portuguese since Latin American scholarship tends to be still preferentially published in English. Um, but I do find that there's still quite a bit. You'll see that there are some Spanish language items in here. But you'll also see that there are still some English language items in here. So it's one filter, it's one strategy to use uh, to select Spanish or the language that you're working in um, to sort of try and focus your results list down to just items that are in the language. Um, you may find a little bit mixed results with how well it actually works. And we'll look at some alternatives as well. Um, let's see. Okay, 
Let me just find one that gives me, all right, so if we don't have an item, and it looks like maybe this still has some full text availability, but off, often you will get a little link here that says request via interlibrary loan, ILL. We'll talk a little bit more about interlibrary loan specifically in a separate video, um, but whenever you find this link, you can always just click this item. Uh, you'll log in using your, whoops, your usual Middlebury credentials, um, and you'll get a pre-filled uh, request. And you just want to check it and make sure that it looks correct and hit submit request. And that will automatically make an ILL request. Um, so it, out of the catalog, out of library search, most of the time, it's just that easy to make an ILL request. So I encourage you to do so. Okay. We talked a little bit about the Spanish language filter as an example of all of the language filters. Um, an alternate strategy that you might use uh, is to actually search in your language, uh, using your language specifically. So instead of indigenous culture, I might enter uh, cultura indígena. And I'm not even gonna use Mexico for the moment. Let's keep it simple. I'm just gonna search for these search terms in Spanish, and you can see that this actually did a lot to focus my results specifically to just Spanish language results, which makes sense because I'm searching using Spanish language terms. So it is bringing me Spanish language results because it's just matching my search term. Um, so this, I think both strategies are useful and worth a try if you're doing research inside of, a, inside of your target language. Um, so give them both a try, but this can be a useful alternative method. And you see that I don't have any other filters going. I just searched in Spanish and I'm getting much more Spanish language focused results. Now, some of you might ask, that's great, Amy, uh, but I am learning a language that does not use the Latin alphabet. It uses a completely different writing system. Can I still use this? And the answer, fortunately, is yes, you probably can. You almost certainly can. Um, so I don't happen to speak any of the languages that don't use a Latin alphabet. Uh, so I'm going to use Google Translate, and you can see that I have just done a quick translation, Japanese culture, into Japanese language. And I am just going to copy this text into my search box, just like that. Now, of course, you can use <clears throat> any input method that you have available. Copying and pasting works great. If you have a keyboard specific to your language and you have your laptop, your device set up to use it, you can do that too. That all works fine. Uh, but just for today, just for the purposes of this example, I've just pasted in what I sincerely hope is a reasonable Japanese translation of the phrase Japanese culture. And if we search for this, it's gonna do exactly the same thing um, that it did before. It's gonna search for those characters very specifically. Depending on the language, this might work more or less well. Um, as you see, as I scroll down, I do start to get some like kind of partial results where it's matched some of the characters, but not necessarily all of them, which depending on the language could make that completely irrelevant. But this method, does still work using other writing systems other than a Latin alphabet. So know that you can also do this. Um, and fortunately, this is true of most library platforms. When we, when we uh, look at some other platforms, we'll try this again, and you'll see that it, it generally works. Most library systems these days are pretty good at doing this. So those are the basic strategies for using library search. Of course, you can see that there's a ton of room for tweaking the tools and applying different strategies. <clears throat> if you're not finding what you're looking for, um, <clears throat> if you have further questions about using library search or accessing materials that you locate there, or if you just hit something that seems like that's not what I expected to happen when I clicked that link, uh, any of that sort of thing, that's always a good opportunity to come ask a librarian for help. Um, we're more than happy to help you troubleshoot any issues that arise. Uh, help you with research queries, help you navigate the results lists and finesse them into the best shape possible for <clears throat> your interest area. 
So by all means, come and ask librarians for help. That's what we're here for. We're always happy to see you. Uh, but those are the fundamental points about using library search in the library. So I hope this video was helpful. As your time at the language school progresses, I'm sure you'll think of more questions, in which case I encourage you to get in touch with a Middlebury librarian. You can find us most afternoons at the research desk at Davis Family Library, or you can reach out to us via the webpage at go slash ask us, where you will find an extensive FAQ, as well as ways to get in touch with us by chat, text, email, or by scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a librarian for your in-depth research questions. We're always happy to help. and Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your summer, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.